Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at the My112 from my phone, also known as the SOS phone. Now the first thing you'll notice about this is it's kind of bulky, um, and that's because it's not only a cell phone, but it's also a portable power bank. So if I open this bit here, you'll see it has a USB port, and you can use that to charge other cell phones, to run USB light bulbs, uh, to charge tablets, pretty much anything that runs on USB power. Now, the other reason why it's a little bit big is that it's designed to be a little bit rugged. Now, it doesn't meet any standards for ruggedness or for waterproof, so it will be okay against a few splashes and perhaps the occasional drop, but it's really not designed as a proper rugged product. It just looks more rugged than it is. I'm sure it can survive a few falls, but you wouldn't want to push it too far because it doesn't meet any standards for that. So what makes this an SOS phone? Well, the first thing is a torch feature. You'll see at the top, it's got an LED here. And if I flick this switch, the torch comes on. And it's a pretty bright torch. Um, they advertise it as being able to throw the light sort of 15 or 20 meters. To be honest, I would say that's unlikely. Maybe, well, I guess you'd be able to see it in pitch black. <laughs> but um, yeah, it is a bright torch, but it's not that bright. Um, for instance, if you compare it to the torch on a regular cell phone, for instance, this iPhone 6, um, it doesn't really make much difference. It's not that bright. It's, it's okay. Um, the other thing that makes it an SOS phone is this button here. Let's say you're trapped and that there was a typhoon or an earthquake or something and you got stuck under some rubble and you need help. You just hold down this button and an insanely loud siren goes off. I mean, it's so loud that you could probably hear this in like the next city over. <laughs> so if you're trapped, that's a very useful feature. The other thing is that you can program this button so that when you double click it, it will send text messages to your friends or family, whatever numbers you program in here, and contact emergency services all automatically by a double press. So if I test that now, even with no SIM card in here, you have to unlock it first. <laughs> Imagine that you're stuck under rubble. Help me, help me. Oh, unlock, okay. Oh my goodness. Okay, so unlock. So it's doing an emergency call. Emergency assistance, B9117. So you can see that the number that's um, programmed in there automatically actually tells you to call another number, but you can change that so it's not a big deal. But it is nice that you can make emergency calls even without any SIM card. But I think that's the same for all phones, so that's not really a unique feature. The unique feature is that when you double click that, it will text all your friends saying, hey, help me, blah, blah, blah. And emergency services can triangulate your position using the cell phone tower, so they will be able to find you, hopefully. <laughs> So let's have a look at what you actually get in the box. You get the phone itself, of course. Then you get the charger. Now this is a one amp USB charger. It gets pretty hot while it's charging, but it seems to be okay. Then you get the USB lead. It's pretty long. Um, there's something unique about this, which I'll show you in a minute. And then you get this freebie, which is a USB torch. Now I asked the guy at the booth, do you know how many watts is this? And he's, you know, he wasn't too sure, but he said, oh, I think it's five. Well, anyway, I've measured it on my USB watt meter. It's actually around one and a half watts. So it's not that bright, but it is useful. So I'll just show you that since it's a nice little freebie that they've added here. You could use this as a reading light or something like that. So I'll just plug it into the USB port. If I can find out which way it goes, there you go. And you can see there's the light. Um, it is pretty bright, you wouldn't want to sort of shine it at your eyes, um, but it's not 5 watts, so yeah, it's okay. It's, it's a useful little reading light and it will run a long time on the uh, power bank or the battery that's inside here. So yeah, that's a nice little freebie. I think I've seen these as CDR King. Um, I can't remember how much they were, around 60 or 80 peso. So they're not that expensive to buy, but it's a nice freebie. Um, this metal bit here actually acts as the heat sink because these LEDs get pretty hot. So yeah, that's that. Now the final thing you get in the box is this screwdriver. <laughs> so you're probably thinking, what? They're giving you a screwdriver. What are you going to do with a screwdriver? Well, you may have noticed on the back of here, there's two screws. So the back battery case is actually held on with screws. Now I'm not sure if that's just to make it look more bulky and more rugged than it is, or if it's because they don't want this to fall off if you drop it. Because you know a lot of cell phones, if you drop them, the back immediately pops off, the battery falls out and it's kind of a hassle. So yeah, that's what the screwdriver's for. And they also give you this little silicone or rubber, whatever it is, kind of, I don't know what you'd call that, a case. Um, it's okay, the only problem is it's kind of loose. 
Uh, it doesn't really fit that well. So when you're using it, it's kind of annoying because it's flapping around a bit. I would have preferred if that was tighter, if it was a higher quality, but eh, it's okay, I guess. So before I show you the features of the phone, let's have a look inside this thing so you can see the battery, because it's kind of interesting the way this works. Oh, if you're wondering, that's the rear camera, by the way. Um, don't get excited, it's not very good. <laughs> so let's use the supplied screwdriver to open up the back case. And you will have to remove the case whenever you want to uh, insert a micro SD card or your SIM card. So you will have to have this screwdriver handy. It's kind of a pain. Of course, this is just a regular flathead screwdriver, so you don't have to use the one that they've supplied. In fact, I'd recommend not using the one they supplied because it's so small. Um, once you tighten these up, it's really hard to actually undo them again with this screwdriver. So I went and got another screwdriver because this one's kind of hard to use when the screws are tight. There we go, it's much easier. So you remove both of the screws and then you can pop the back battery case off. There we go, so now we're inside. So this battery you just pull out to remove and you realize that it's pretty much taking up most of the space and weight of the phone. The phone now weighs pretty much nothing and it's all here in the battery. Now this battery is really quite unique and I'm still not sure whether I like it or not. I think I do. Um, you can see that the USB power bank feature that came out of the phone is actually built into the battery. So the battery is a fully self-contained power bank stroke battery for the phone. You see that's where the connections go and it matches here with the battery. So the idea is that even if you break your cell phone, let's say this gets smashed uh, or it gets wet, you can't turn it on and nothing at all works out the cell phone, you can still remove the battery and you can use this as a regular power bank. So you can see here there's the micro USB port for charging and you just use the included cable for that. So you can actually charge this directly. There you go. And then you would connect whatever you want to charge, or if you're connected to, say, the USB bulb, you put that there. So this is fully self-contained union. I think <laughs> I'm still undecided if this is a good idea or a bad idea, because if ever you have to replace the battery, it's going to be very expensive with everything built into this. But I don't know, I think it's kind of cool that even if the phone dies, you can still use this as a power bank. Um, and it has a LED built in here so that it will tell you whether it's charging or not. And you can see here it says 3.7 amp, 6,000 milliamp hour, 22.2 watt hours. And tells you what model it's for and the charge up voltage, etc. Um, it also tells you about putting it in here when the phone's dead and the little charge light. It's actually very clever. They've really thought through what a consumer's going to think when they open this up. And it gives you everything you need to know so that in an emergency you don't have to be wondering or you know you probably won't have access to the internet to check this kind of thing so the fact that they've taken the time to put all the useful information on here it really shows that you know there's someone at my phone with with a brain who's thinking ahead and you know they've actually put some effort into this so i'm happy with that so let's put the battery to the side for a minute and have a look here this is where your sim cards and your sd or micro sd card goes now this is really fiddly and i don't like this at all basically you have to try and get your sim cards into the slots down there and when you put in the micro sd it just kind of sits there it doesn't there's no like spring action it doesn't go all the way in it just goes there so uh, it's not very nice it does work but it's not very nice um, and for anyone wondering make sure you use a full size sim because if you try to put a micro or mini sim in there it's pretty much going to get stuck and you're going to have to open up the whole phone to try and get it out so let's put this thing back together and check out the um, features the battery is actually a little bit awkward to put in sometimes i put it in and it doesn't sit quite right um, and the phone won't turn on but sometimes it just goes in easily so i don't know i guess it just takes a bit of practice now I said earlier that there's something unique about this USB charging cable. It's a micro USB cable, but it's not standard. If you compare it to this one, I don't know how easy you'll be able to see this on the camera, but it's actually much longer. And the reason for that is because they put the charging port in the most ridiculous position ever. You see how they put it right up in the corner. So when you try to plug in a regular cable, it can't go in, or it can go in just a little bit, like a slant. Um, it can't go in properly because, you know, this cable can't fit in this little tight gap. So what they've had to do is make a non-standard cable that has a slightly longer bit so that it can reach. 
Now the problem with that, of course, is that if this cable ever gets broken, you can't use these standard USB cables as easily. Now to be fair, they will work, um, even if they don't plug in the whole way, they will still work, but uh, it's a very, very bad connection. It will work, but it's not great. So I don't know what they were thinking, why they put it all the way up in there. Surely they could have designed this so that it was here or, I don't know, maybe not recessed as far. I'm not really sure what they could have done, but yeah, kind of a bad design choice there. Um, and just to be clear, this isn't a phone made by my phone. This isn't made in the Philippines or made for Filipinos. This is a generic Chinese phone. Um, you can find this on AliExpress, Alibaba, many Chinese sites um, for China Mobile and various different brands. Basically, they just put your brand name on here, um, custom picture on the front, and then customize the software a little bit. So it has been customized for the Philippines, but it's not a Philippine-made phone. So it's not like this is the mistake of my phone. It's it's whoever actually designed this phone in the first place. And for anyone curious, the torch switch will work even if the phone is turned off, but the SOS button will only work if the phone is turned on. Um, so I would have liked it if the SOS button works even when the phone is turned off, because, you know, imagine if you're in a real emergency, your phone's turned off, you have to be like, okay, turn on, wait 20 seconds, okay, now our SOS. Kind of annoying, but um, I guess it's because the SOS button is tied in with the software and the software's only running when the phone's running. By the way, sorry if I'm jumping around topics. Um, I didn't like write a plan down for this video. I'm pretty much just been using the phone for a couple of days. Um, and as I look through here, I'm telling you things I remembered and things I noticed. So sorry if I'm jumping around topics. So let's turn the phone back on since I removed the battery. So let's talk about the screen. It's a good size and the colours are okay, but the problem is the viewing angles. Um, it actually looks a lot better on camera than in person, but in person it pretty much has to be facing you directly for you to read the screen. If you put it at an angle like that, you can't really see the screen anymore, and likewise if you put it like this, or this, um, or this, you pretty much have to be looking at it dead on, which is kind of annoying because when you're texting, you usually, like let's say you're walking along and texting or you're standing up, you normally have it kind of slanted like this and then text, 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 right? But with this one, if you want to read the screen, it has to actually face you, so it's a little bit awkward. Um, but otherwise, the screen is okay. I really do like the size and the fact that it's color. Now this is a dumb phone, it has support for two SIM cards which is good, but it's not Android or iPhone or anything like that, it's just a dumb phone, but it does have some okay features. So let's start with the SOS feature. This is where you can set the SOS mode. So if I turn that off, now when I hold the SOS button, it doesn't do anything. If I double click it, oh, okay, so that bit still works, the emergency call bit still works, but the siren doesn't. So I'm going to just turn that back on. SOS dial list is where you put the phone numbers of people you want it to call when you do that double click. SOS message is whatever message you want to send when you do the double click. Um, the owner's info. Now if you put in your name, address, blood type, etc, etc, it will also text that information out when you do your emergency thing, so it's good to fill that out. Now SOS alarms. This one is just telling you how to use it basically. Long press SOS button to sound alarm and press the SOS button twice to do the emergency calls, blah blah blah. So that's just giving you information about how it works. So that's the SOS thing, and I can see that being useful, especially if, you, you know, if you've you been in an area where you think there's a good chance of you being involved in some kind of emergency situation. Now you have the Pinoy um, My Phone stuff. Now this only works if you put in their special uh, micro SD card that you have to buy from them. And it has prayers and things like that. It's not really my kind of thing. Um, one annoying thing for me personally is that it comes with these morning prayers and evening prayers and 3 p.m. prayer and so on enabled by default. And the problem is that what it does is, let's say uh, it's midday, it sounds a really, really, really loud alarm because this speaker is just super loud to remind you and that comes enabled by default. I would prefer if that didn't come enabled by default because every hour, two hours, this thing, you know, the alarm's going crazy telling you to pray. Um, you can turn them off but I would prefer they're off by default. So now we go to messaging and this is where the phone kind of lets you down. 
um, considering one of the main things about a phone in the first place is calls and texts, it doesn't handle text messages very well. Um, basically, it's just very slow. Let me try and type a message. So you can see it's, it's just laggy, so it doesn't always catch every press. You can see there, it just it's really lagging behind. And the problem is that as you that was my fault. As you do more and more text, it starts to get slower and slower and slower, um, and then it starts missing letters or missing clicks. So uh, it really sucks when it comes to messaging. Um, so I don't know. That really annoyed me, to be honest, or not annoyed, just disappointed because how can you use this as a daily phone when you can't even write messages on it? Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to fix that somehow. You don't really get like firmware updates for these kind of dumb phones, so the chances are that's never going to be fixed. So for me, that's that's a big thumbs down. Now, contacts, of course, is the same on every phone. Just store the numbers of your friends and family. The good thing is that they have pre-programmed it with a lot of emergency numbers. DOTC, DILG, DPWH, etc, etc, DSWD. Um, so that is quite a nice little thing that they've added in there. Cool logs, obviously, you know what that is. Um, multimedia, the camera, I'll show you that. Um, let's have a look. What can I... let's put this here. Oops. So, yeah, it's a camera, you can kind of see. Um, and let me move this closer. There, so, uh, I don't know, it's okay. You wouldn't really, wouldn't really want to use this for much because it doesn't show much detail, but yeah, it's a camera, 640 by 480. Video recorder, pretty much the same thing, but your resolution is awful. Um, 176 by 144, let's try and make a video. Yeah, I mean the frame rate on this is pretty bad and it's pretty blurry. Oh, I don't know, it's okay I guess. It could be worse. How do we stop this? Okay, now let's play it back. See, so yeah, there you go. doesn't appear to have audio, which is a shame. Um, Anyway, so that's video player. We have a sound recorder, so let's try that. Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. Test, test, test. Okay, saved. Now back here you'll see audio player, video player, image viewer. Now that's not for files you've put on the micro SD, that's for the ones you've recorded here, for instance, using the sound recorder or the camera or the video recorder. Um, calendar or organizer, calendar alarm, calculator, etc. Pretty simple stuff. Um, you already know this, of course. 2 plus 2 equals 4. So now let me show you something that you probably didn't think is possible. You can actually watch movies on this. Now they have to be converted to the right format, but they will play. So now let me show you something that you probably didn't think is possible on the dumb phone. You can actually watch movies on this. So this is Pitch Perfect 2. Um, this is just a small clip that I ripped from the DVD because it has to be converted to the right format. Now, unfortunately, I can't play sound because YouTube will pick up on this and pretty much <laughs> kick my account off YouTube. Um, but there you go, you can actually watch full movies on this. So that's pretty cool and the quality is actually okay. The only thing is you do have to convert them to the right format, which is free GP. Um, but you can watch movies on here, so that's impressive. You can also play uh, MP3 files like music. Now of course I can't play music either because YouTube will tell me off but uh, I can play this free mp3. And the speaker is very loud and that's actually on its lowest setting. See? Zero, one. Uh, now let's go on to the FM radio. Now you don't need any headphones for this because it can just work by itself. The only problem is that even the lowest volume is incredibly loud on this speaker. It pretty much goes from either silent and off to ridiculously loud. So oh, that's an, another really annoying feature. Let me cover the my uh, the speaker, and then I'll put it. <sighs> 
3D New Generation Appliances. Sing tibay lang. Pinoy. Pinoy. Sa sports, sabang. Sa bangbahan, bawal mapagod. Sung gabi ng tagumpay. Sa call center. So the FM radio does work really well. Um, the signal's very clear. Volume goes ridiculously loud. Like if you wanted to have a rave, you could just put this in the middle of a field and you know everyone for two miles will be able to hear it. <laughs> so that's good in some cases, but if you just wanted to use this for casual listening at home, it would just drive everyone you know crazy because it, even on the lowest volume, it's just too loud. Um, that's another thing that you know I wish they would release a software update where you can actually have it at a volume that isn't like ridiculously loud. As for fun and games, it's kind of depressing. <laughs> it's just one game. Um, it's an okay game, like you just push these blocks around. Um, it is kind of fun, but it only has 15 levels, so you finish it pretty quick. Um, it's an okay game. I assume that you can probably load more games on here by putting them on the micro SD card, but I haven't really tried that yet. Now, it does have a internet browser, um, and it looks like it could be kind of okay. It's only um, WAP, so it's not like 3G or 4G or anything like that, but it looks like it could be okay. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a SIM ready at the moment to test this, so that's kind of disappointing because it only takes full size sims and all the sims I have are micro sims. So I'm going to have to do a separate video uh, showing the, the internet feature of this. But it looks quite promising. Now one of the things you might have seen uh, for this phone being advertised is that it's glow in the dark. So I thought, oh that's cool, if you leave this somewhere and it's pitch black you'll be able to see it because it's glowing. But no, it's not glow in the dark. What they mean is that the buttons have a light behind them that shines through, so that if the phone is turned on, I don't know how well this will be able to show on camera because I have my lights here, but basically it shines through there um, and you'll be able to read the numbers even in the dark. But that's not glow in the dark, that's just backlit numbers. So yeah, that's slightly misleading on the advertising there. And as you probably noticed earlier, it does have a Bluetooth option. So I've synced it with this Bluetooth speaker, and then if we go into the audio player, turn up the volume, that's actually coming up here. So you can sync it with Bluetooth speakers, you could sync it with a Bluetooth headset and take phone calls on that. So that seems to work okay, um, no problems there. There is also a headphone jack at the bottom, uh, it does not come with headphones, but I plugged in a pair and it actually sounded okay. Um, sounded a lot better listening through headphones than the speaker. Because although the speaker is very loud, it's not very clear. So uh, yeah, you can plug in your own headset. It doesn't come with one, but you can plug in your own. Now I want to talk a little bit about the power bank feature. There's a lot of lies about power banks. You know, companies will, you know, let's say this is a power bank. Imagine that was a power bank. One company will sell this saying it's 1000 milliamp hour. Then another company will sell it the exact same thing saying, oh, it's 3000 milliamp hour. So there's a lot of lies about power banks. Now this one is meant to have a capacity of 6000 milliamp hour, which is equivalent because it's 3.7 volts to around 22.2 I think two watt hours. So I connected a dummy load to this and let it run and then measured how much power I actually got out of the battery. And I got around 18 watt hours from the supposed 22. Now that's actually very good because one thing you have to remember is there is some loss going from the battery, um, you know, upping the voltage to five volts for USB and then your device using it. So I was actually very happy I got 18 watt hours out of what's meant to be 22. So I would say this is probably a genuine 6,000 milliamp hour battery. So big thumbs up there that you know it's a genuine product, and I'm sure that kind of adds to the cost of this because it's not cheap. It's 1,400 peso, and for 1,400 peso you could buy a dumb phone and a 6,000 milliamp hour um, portable power bank and probably still have money left over. So at least they've used you know genuine good battery cells in this product. Um, one thing that I didn't mention earlier is that it has this weird problem where if I press on this side of the phone, the screen does like a like a weird thing. You know like when you press on a TV screen and you see the liquid underneath? Well, that's what happens here. I don't know if I'll be able to catch it on camera. You can see here when I press this button. Um, I doubt it's going to be a problem, but it does kind of, you know, say, say something about the quality of this, that even pushing down these buttons here, 
um, it's causing stress on the screen here so I don't know if that's going to hurt it in the long run so you might want to check if your unit has the same problem. So I think I've covered most of the major features about this phone. If I've missed anything or if you have any questions put them in the comment section below. I do still want to make another video showing the internet browser especially because a lot of the networks now give for instance free Facebook access and things like that which is perfect for a dumb phone like this. Um, you know get basic access to Facebook normally you can't see pictures and stuff but you can see status updates so I would like to test that and of course what kind of review would this be if I didn't at least splash some water on it and try drop it a few times so let's go outside and see if this thing can survive fingers crossed because I like this phone and I don't want it to break Okay, so that's not a good start because now it won't turn on anymore and that was just two short drops. Okay, so as you just saw, I gave it two short drops. This bit of plastic here is a little bit damaged, um, but otherwise the phone looks okay. And I say looks okay because it doesn't turn on anymore. <laughs> so I don't know if the battery's come loose or if that's really all it took to break it. So I'm going to remove the back case and see what's going on. Again, let's just have a quick look around here. Yeah, it looks like it's cracked open a little bit here where it fell. Um, anyway, let's open this up and have a look. Maybe the battery's come loose and that's why it's cracked open a bit. The battery seems to be okay. I'll just remove it and then put it back in. Let's try to turn it on. Nope. Let's remove the battery. This is going to be really, really rubbish if it's died from those two drops. Because I've got, you know, dumb phones which aren't rugged, and I could drop them all day long like that and they wouldn't break. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> That's all it took. Two drops like that and it's broken. Let's test the battery and see if it still works. Maybe something's broken inside there. So I have this USB lamp. happened. Oh, it's bent. It's become bent. Okay, so the battery's still good because it's charging or it's running the light. Let's try to put it back in the phone. Try to turn it on. No. Wow, that is very, very disappointing. So much for a rugged SOS phone. You drop it a couple of times and the whole thing's dead. Well, there you go everyone. I'm disappointed. I've got other dumb phones that, like I said, I've dropped before many, many times and they've never broken. This is meant to be a rugged, you know, emergency SOS phone, even with the silicone case, and it's dead from two drops. So, yeah, I don't know if I've just made this whole video pointless because who wants to buy a phone that dies after two drops? Anyway, I'll probably open this thing up and see if I can work out what's happened. Maybe it's just a loose cable or something like that. Uh, yeah, end of the video, I guess. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching.